All right, we're gonna do a video today uh, rebuilding a hydraulic cylinder for the K-Singer saws. This goes for your 3.8 inch cylinders and belly cylinders. Loader cylinders are a little different, but uh, this is a, a cylinder sent in from a customer we're rebuilding off a of J26 three point hitch. Did a nice job packing it up. Very important, make sure you got it wrapped in a, a bag that's sealed. Just in case you didn't get all the oil out, you want all the oil out of them before you ship them. And then wrap them up, uh, double bag them. And then pack them good and recommend putting insurance on them when you ship them. Because if they get lost, it's not a cheap cylinder to replace. I don't want a, a clean environment to do this on. It's very important. These cylinders are under high pressure and any little bit of dirt and dust and stuff gets in there. And it's uh, very abrasive under pressure. It's It'll destroy these things in the system. These are anywhere from usually on the low side, 500 pounds. Or you get some cylinders that are... 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 pounds, depending on what you're working. Uh, that's pounds per square inch. So, imperative that they're clean. You're going to want uh, some kind of brake clean, carb clean to clean this up. And uh, petroleum jelly, Vaseline grease. You don't want to use uh, anything harsh on these O-rings, such as brake clean and that kind of stuff. Gasoline, keep all that stuff away because these O-rings will swell. So the brake clean to clean up the cylinder and the piston and whatnot but you want to make sure the brake clean's completely out of there and dry and gone before you start installing the o-rings so we'll, we'll take you through the process but it's pretty straightforward pretty basic uh, we sell the kits for the three-point hitch and the middle lift cylinders and also for the hh34 which is the bigger three-point hitch lift cylinder that's got its own kit but the three-point hitch j26 series and the middle lift belly cylinders take the same kit all right here's the j26 same principles as doing our middle lifts, it's essentially the same cylinder, just bigger. It's going to be oil, and this one is going to be messy. But take it apart. You can either tap this with a hammer until you bottom out, or flip it over and tap it on something solid. Go to make sure there's no big gouges or grooves in here that are going to tear your rings and your part of your piston as you're coming in and out. that had more of a groove than I thought. Kind of committed now. Okay. There's the bottom, just like your middle lift. And then now we got the second part. But sometimes you just gotta knock it through with a punch. It won't take much. Support the cylinder. All right, this is an older one set up like I was telling you before some of these just got one ring and that's it so just keep everything clean all steps of the way that's done Now the nice thing about this is they left you enough room, you can put backup rings in here. Most of the time. Not a bad practice to do as long as you put them in the right spot. The biggest difference is this top seal. And sometimes this thing is not friendly to get out. Usually it's not bad to get in. Most of the time this is going to take a pick or one of these miniature pry bar type deals. I'm going to go with the heavier pick see if we can get it out. This is usually a steel cased seal en encompassed by rubber. So it all depends on what you can do here and what you can't do. Again, you want to kind of get behind it. Sometimes they go all right. I don't know if my little tool is shrinking on me or not, but we're gaining on it. All 
There we go. All right, got that seal out. Now we're gonna get back here with our O-ring. There is no backup ring on this particular one. Again, just keep cleaning the heck out of everything. Other important thing is this groove needs to be clean. And there's a little, little lip here. I don't know if I just did that. I don't think I did. I think I was sitting here where it's shiny. Somebody took rebuilt this once before and they got beat up here. I'm gonna have to kind of clean that up a little bit. So I just cleaned up that little bit of lip that was there. And this is all cleaned up in here. Just take your rag and your tool and you clean those grooves out really, really well. Hold it over a few times and get right in there. So we're gonna make sure this is clean again. Do the same trick with the rag. And we got our mid lift J26 kit, same as the other one that rebuilds one of these or we rebuild one mid lift. You may be able to do partial rebuilds with the extra parts left over depending on your year. You may have no parts left over, you may have a few. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna match up these rings. These both are the same. So we got two of these here, that's what this kit is. Lube up your O-ring as always. Make sure this is nice and clean. So we're going to add a backup ring to this. Your concave part goes to the piston. Your flat part goes to the machine part of whatever you're working on. Try not to roll it. Double check it, make sure it's not rolled, that your concave part is going to be facing the O-ring. Put your O-ring in that's lubed up. There you go. I'm then putting a backup ring in if you want. It comes in the kit. A lot of years had it, some years didn't. But it's in the kit if you want it. So now that part is good. And you get your actual piston itself. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to have your O-ring, and then the correct backup ring, that's in the kit, it's a bigger one. Lube them up. The backup ring is going to go towards the rod side. Again, if you don't have special tools, you can put these in with hand or a little screwdriver, just got to be careful. I feel like this one's fighting more. It's going to roll on me, I can tell, but sometimes you can make it not roll if you work it in. There we go. It's fine. Concave sides go into the O-ring. Seat it in there. Get your lubed up O-ring in there. See all the little strands of the Vaseline and stuff, but not to breathe. It. Now the O-ring's in there. Wipe them off nice and clean. That part's done. So now we've got the O-ring to go in here, just like on the middle lift. Kind of like fold it in a little bit and up. And then just walk it right into that groove. You can use your finger or a, a tool to help get it in the groove. And once it's held in there, you can just push this down in. Like that. And then use the back of the tool to seat it. And then seat the rest with your finger. Just make sure it's clean and seated. Again, very important, make sure this is clean up here. 
and then you're going to take your hard seal and then it's going to sit in here if you've got a, a piece that's damaged or, or knocked over pried over from prying on it start on that side so you don't damage the seal itself and then most of the times these will start pretty good and then you just got to tap them in you don't want them where they fall in and out they held in there they're made a little bit bigger so they're held in there with some pressure okay so we had a couple birds and it folded over here from other previous rebuilds and uh i might have done a little bit but they were pretty hard somebody beat on the old seal to get out pretty bad so i took these up cleaned them up ground them down a little bit you got to make sure this is absolutely clean in here these are actually kind of folded over a little bit you can't really see the angle and these tend to be most of the times a metal seal and they're kind of pressed in there pressed fit so the metal keeps it locked in so once it's in there these kind of come in into and over the seal you've got a damaged section as long as you can get get it hammered to the other ends I recommend starting it on the damaged section and then work your way around and then uh, a little bit of lube definitely can't hurt with these so the rubber on the outside that's coating this metal is essentially there to retain the seal and helps for corrosion purposes but. So I got damage back here. I got a little bit here. This is this is an old cylinder. It's been done a time or two. So you shouldn't be able to just push this in by hand. It should take a little bit of force. So what I do is I start it in the damaged area, if there's a damaged area, and keep constant pressure on that. And what you want to do is work this other half around. I've got a smaller hammer I prefer to use, but I don't have it here. This will work. But hit this kind of at an angle down but in. And not all at once you got to keep working it around and back and forth sometimes they go harder sometimes they go easier but you don't want it so it falls out it's got to be retained in there if this metal is worn back too much then you got to do do something if you got got some jb weld or, or something along there some loctite sometimes it'll keep them in you just don't want the JB weld to get in here on your ceiling surfaces. And this should be about flush. And as it goes flush, it works itself down under, under this angle, and it retains it. All right, that's that part. So these are pretty simple, these single ring cylinders. We did put the backup ring on here, and we did put a backup ring on here. All right, now, again, this needs to be absolutely smooth to be able to, if there's any burrs on here, grind them down or sand them down or do whatever you gotta do. Lube it up. Now we're gonna send this through the center. Again, you're gonna have this paint here. If you've got chunks of paint that wanna come off, get them off first. And then make sure these, this one's a little rough. I'm gonna take a roll lock. I should have done this before. But I thought they felt fairly smooth, but looking at them again, they're a little rough. You don't want to go up into the bore. You just want to clean up here where these are going to catch on your, on your seals. And then the paint that's right here, you might as well get rid of it too. Okay, so I smoothed these out. There was a little bit of metal catching here that would have done some damage possibly to these seals. So we're going to put some Vaseline up top here. Make sure your seals are coated in here. We'll get that started. And then now. Get these seals really coated up nice, nice. Put it somewhere where that piston can come down through the top. I got my ring compressor on here. You don't have to use a ring compressor, but it makes it a little easier, less chance of messing these threads up a little bit, but you still gotta get them past this hole and that's where the damage usually happens. You just tap it gently, make sure you got somewhere for the piston to go when it's lined up straight. So, 
You see they're past there, past here. I don't see any chunks of rubber, so that's good. It means they went in through pretty smooth. Drop that in a little bit. You don't have to go too crazy far. Then remember where your fitting was on this. You can do the ring compressor on this little guy if you want, but we're going to do it without so you can see how they go without. Again, after you take the first one through, just put some in here too, since the piston already cleared whatever was in there out. Make sure your fitting's where you want it. And this one, you're going to get started evenly, so just top, tap opposite, go like 12, 6, 9, 3, until you feel like it's getting started. And if it feels like it's even, then hit them in the center. And if it looks like it's going at all crooked on one side or the other, just hit that side center and then work your way around like a clock. This shouldn't fight too bad. If it is, then there's probably something wrong. you, you got to hit it fairly, fairly hard. Now your retaining pin can go through there. Usually, I'll put the fitting on these ahead of time. It's easier, but you can put it on there with a socket. Um, these usually you'll get a piece of pipe for the J26, or you can go with a direct fitting in there and an adapter. Make sure you use a uh, pipe that's made for hydraulic rating. I know a lot of these have water pipe. It's really not the right thing to use. Even though these aren't crazy pressure, they're high enough pressure. And depending on what tractor they're on, they could be uh, over a thousand pounds of pressure. Actually, you can be over quite a bit of thousand pounds of pressure depending on what tractor you put it on. Um, so, always use hydraulic rated pipe. And this guy should get cleaned up and go painted and sent out. Again, pretty simple, but we do hydraulic services. If you want to send us your cylinder, absolutely. If you want reman cylinders, we do have some. We usually, don't have three point hitch cylinders, but we do have mid lifts available. And remember, our kits are usually on sale. We run a lot of sales on our, our kits. We have kits for the loaders as well. The, the three-point hitches, the mid-lifts, new and old loaders, power steering kits for the cylinders. Uh, CaseHungerSoulTractors.com. Check it out. And uh, be sure to watch uh, our other videos coming up. Please like and subscribe, and we appreciate you watching. Quick note about tools. I know it's not in everybody's budget to have all different tools. I can say you can get a real inexpensive O-ring pick set. A pretty inexpensive o-ring spoon kit i would say those two are very important quick photo of a customer's uh, cylinder they sent in for us this is a restore paint job just one of our quick uh, regular paint jobs going out that's what they look like please be sure to like and subscribe and feel free to comment below we really appreciate it all uh, go to casingersalltractors.com for these seal kits and many other seal kits as well as all kinds of parts for casinger saw garden tractors briggs and stratton engines kohler engines and onan engines thanks for watching see you next time